Hello everyone. How is your Christmas break? You enjoyed it? So, okay, let's move on. Style mode now. So, ladies and gentlemen, just sit, relax, and enjoy because today we'll be discussing the elements of auditory arts. But first, let me give you some information about it. So, what is an auditory arts? An auditory art is the art of arranging in time so as to produce a continuous, unified, evocative composition as through melody, harmony, rhythm, timbre, and etc. So, there are six elements of uh, auditory arts. Number one is rhythm. Number two is the melody, i.e. the dynamics. Number three is the melody. Number four is the harmony. Number five is the timbre. And number six is the texture. The first one is rhythm. This element of music refers to the pulse of the music. It is the consistent pattern of identical or similar sound in a music. Most of the time, rhythm is associated with beats or the basic unit of music. Tempo, which refers to the speed measured by beat per second, and meter, which organizes into recognizable recurrent pattern. There are classical terms that are used in the variation of tempo. First, allegro. It is a fast variation of tempo or the opposite of moderato. Second, vivace. It has lively tempo that has 140 beats per minute. Third one is moderato. At moderate speed, its beat per second is in average time. Fourth is Andante, which is moderately slow like walking pace or sound like marching. Fifth, Adagio, is lower than Andante. Sixth, Lento, it is a slow variation. Seventh, Largo, slowly and broadly, it is unheard and it portrays a grand manner or a dignified performance or sound. Eighth is Accelerando, gradually speeding up or one which goes from slow to fast. 9. Ralentado, gradually slowing down. Next is alargando, getting slower and broadening, which means going slower yet louder. And the last one is rubato, can be called as rub time or rhythm is played freely for expressive effect. It is a give and take timing of music. And that's all for the first element of auditory arts. The second element is dynamics. It refers to the loudness and softness of music. It offers a way to show expression in a sheet music. It helps in driving the emotion content of music through volume and intensity, as if one could adjust both volume and the color depth of the on the screen simultaneously. You can also think of the intensity side of dynamics as the strength of a note. Some notes are meant to be played gentle and lightly, while others are meant to be played more strong. They are used in everything from symphonies to popular music to movie soundtracks. For example, when creating a battle scene, it would be much more convenient to, to use louder dynamics rather than quiet dynamics at is, as it involves scenes such as bravery and freedom. Quiet dynamics fits conveniently for a character that is sneaking out or even an intimate moment between characters. To further discuss dynamic, let us begin with piano and forte. Piano marking looks like a lower letter P, which means to play quietly and softly or lightly. Forte marking, on the other hand, is a lowercase f, which represents lo loud and strong playing. This symbol goes below written music to tell the musician how to play and stay in effect until another marking is shown. Some dynamic markings also include letter M, which is also known as mezzo meaning medium. A mezzo piano dynamic marking looks like the combination of M and e. Number 3. Melody When you think of the singer's part in your favorite song, chances are you are thinking of the melody, which refers to a memorable series of pitches in a non-formal setting, we can just say it is the tune of the song. If you think of the song many had a little lump, you are probably thinking of the melody and not the accompanying harmonic notes that could go along with 
If you sing the song Happy Birthdays at a party, you are most likely singing the melody. This is generally true for many styles of music. Whether if it is a classical tune or reggae song or an electronic dance track. The range of a melody is the space it occupies within the spectrum of pitches the human ear can perceive. Some melodies have a range of two notes, the soprano solo in the Kaidi Ellison of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart Mass in C minor, K.427, has a range of two octaves. Melody also has a scale. In some cultures, scales are formally recognized as system of tones from which melody can be built. Melody, however, attendates the concept of scale. A scale may be abstracted from their melodies by listing the tones used in order of pitch. The interval of melody's scale contribute to its overall character. When children sing, it's raining, it's pouring. G, G, E, A, G, E. A deity found throughout number 4 harmony. Melodies are substantial enough to be music on their own but they often sound empty and lonesome without some accompaniment. Thus, many composers add support, supporting notes called harmony. There are many types of harmony that can be added, but in general, harmony can be defined as notes that sound simultaneously. Harmony acts as notes that support a melody. Harmony often adds framework or context for the melody, like a setting in a story. Think back to Mary Had a Little Lamb. We can harmonize the melody by adding accompanying notes. This can be done by adding counter melody or by adding two or more notes which are played at a time, known as chords. Timber. Timber is used to define the color or sound quality of a song. Every instrument produces its own unique timber, but musicians can alter these two skills and practice. Scientifically, there are three main factors that define timbre. Number one, harmonic content, or the intensity and quality of harmonics within the tone. Number two, attack and decay, which describe the way the sound is produced and naturally recedes. And number three, the vibrato, is the natural and controlled pulsation of a tone. Together, these three components impact the, the unique sound and makes tone identifiable and help color our music. Simply, timber enable us to differentiate between a trombone and a saxophone or flute and a human voice, which all different sound qualities. They are different timbers and this is what makes music a little more color. Last texture. Believe it or not, you hear texture in music all the time. In music, texture refers to the interaction of melodies and harmonies within a song. These parts can be instruments, singers, or a combination of both. In general, the texture of music can be thin or thick, thin textures being music with few differing musical parts and thick textures being music with many differing musical parts. Thin and thick textures are often woven throughout a song. It is this weaving that helps create intensity and drive or calm and relaxation within a piece of music. When we want to describe music more precisely, we can refer to three specific textures. Monophony, polyphony, and homophony. The names of these textures were derived from Latin with the prefixes giving structural implications and the suffix phony meaning to sound. This is not to be confused with the word phony meaning fake or fraudulent. Monophony is the thinnest of the three textures with only one musical part in a song. The prefix mono means one like a monocle or monora monorail. So it is easy to remember. In monophony, there are no background singers or instruments. Historically, monophony was the first texture. The most well-known type of medieval monophony is Gregorian chant. This is monophony because there is only a single line of music with no accompaniment. Finally, you can often hear monophony at the beginning of sports events, where soloists will sing the national anthem without background in instruments. Naturally, singing the same things as everyone else all the time became boring. Thus, polyphony was born. You probably know that poly means many, like a polygon has many sides. And since we know phony means to sound, we can immediately deduce a basic meaning of many sound at the same time. More specifically, Polypony is heard when two or more independent melodies are sung or played simultaneously. 
In polyphony, the pitches and rhythms of each musical part are different from one another. Because of this, we can say that polyphony is a much thicker texture than monophony. Think of a round, like row, row, row your boat. If you and your friend are singing the song as a round, you are singing two different parts at the same time. Many times, an instant of polyphony is achieved through singing, though it can occur between two or more instruments as well. This happens often is orchestral or band music. A very common example of unheard at wedding ceremonies is Pacabal's Canaan. Part of the beauty of the song is the interplay between the four simultaneous melodies. Okay, thank you class. Uh, that's all and thank you for listening. God bless you all.